I know our entrepreneurs are nervous and there's very serious judging going on on the front, but this is truly a celebration. And let me just take a moment to tell you how we got to this place. 11 months ago, hundreds of Inglewood residents and community stakeholders convened and gathered. And for the last 11 months, we have been recreating our vision, our goals, and our strategy to improve the quality of life in Inglewood for the next five to 10 years. Thus the name, the Inglewood Quality of Life Plan. So this all started with our quality of life planning. We have five task forces in the community who have been meeting again monthly for the last 11 months. And some of the work of those task forces are displayed for you along the wall. So I hope that you get a chance to um, see this work. And a portion of it is memorialized here on the walls. But then our final written and published plan will be ready sometime in late January. So the money that's been provided today uh, came from Whole Foods. And personal made this happen, it's sitting right here in the front. And the minute I'm going to ask him to come up, I do see our Alderman, Alderman Tony folks is here. Oh, I want to take a, a moment just to ask Walter Rob to come up and give a few brief, brief comments uh, because he's the one you know, who had this vision to support the entrepreneurs in our community. So let's give it up for Walter Rob. And he, you know, I asked my stepfather uh, like a day later, and he got his checkbook out and he just wrote me a check for 10,000 bucks. Mm -hmm. wow. And with that 10,000 bucks, I, uh, I put 3,000 inventory and I started my first natural food store in 1978. Mm -hmm. wow. So I've never forgotten the power of somebody not only writing a check, but actually somebody actually believing in you that you could make it happen. Hello, hello, hello. So my name is Eddie Downs from FBG Cookies and Company. This is funny because I just said to Alexis, I hope they don't go in alphabetical order. <laughs> so, you did. So now I'm here. Um, FBG Cookies and Company was actually founded as FBG Catering in 2010. Um, I decided to take a leap of faith and start my own catering company. Um, I baked cookies when I had just been a fat kid. My mother liked them. She took them to work. People started asking for them. I began to bake them. And so that's when FBG Catering took a twist and became FBG Cookies and Company. Um, from there, I have been blessed with so many opportunities. I did ABC's Great Holiday Baking Show last season. Um, that was an amazing experience. Since then, I have worked effortlessly to try to bring FBG to fruition um, get us in brick and mortar so that um, I can share FBG with not only the city of Chicago, but with the nation. Um, my plans for FBG is to bring it into the community and not just be a bakery um, getting business, but to give something back to the community. So not only do we want to have the bakery that's going to offer good, um, more healthier choices as far as bakery, baking, but also have us um, bring the community in. So we could do mommy and me baking classes, daddy and me baking classes. Um, we'll set up as a cafe so we have internet and Wi-Fi for the students at Candy King and the surrounding high schools. It could be a meeting place for the community. Um, so that way we're active in the community. We're not just sitting there and taking money from the community. Not only that, we will bring you jobs. I would love to have it as a training spot for the Candy King um, baking um, school here at Washburn, and also we can run classes on the weekends for the kids in the community. So that's my dream, that's my vision for FBG, um, to offer a healthier baked good and to also be part of the community as a whole. Yes, so I have brought samples of butter cookies and peanut butter cookies. My peanut butter cookies were literally melting. Eddie, is this you? No, that is not me. All right. That silver tray there is. This is Eddie. Eddie samples. from our panel? I won't go back here. So, well, first of all, congratulations for getting on the final list, on the final list. Congratulations for that. If you are the top winner, what will be your first step in moving ahead your dreams? Um, 
what will be your first step? You're the $10,000 winner, for example. How will that work for you? If I'm the $10,000 winner, um, my first step is to find a space here in Inglewood. I am looking for actually somewhere along 63rd Street um, because it is the main thing. Uh, it also will make it easier for the students to travel and things like that, but I believe that it will be the best place to set the bed for you. Morning, Eddie. Morning. You're cookie man, huh? I am the cookie man. <laughs> <laughs> How many cookies do you have and what are the uh, Price points and the gross margins on cookies. Well, I have approximately twelve different types of cookies, um, eight in which I produce on a very regular basis. Um, right now, they're selling at five dollars um, per batch. There's approximately ten cookies to each batch. Um, I'm running my prices at five dollars, and I make approximately a forty percent margin. There you go. Let's give a round of applause. <laughs> Greetings. I am Andrea Natase Rain of Forever Fitness Chicago LLC, and we are seeking $10,000 towards a fleet of vending machines that distributes prepackaged fruits and vegetables. According to the National Automatic Merchandising Association, 100 million Americans utilize vending machines daily, and vending is a $30 billion a year industry. There is a demand for healthy alternatives for the convenience-oriented society we live in, and we will serve that niche. 100% of the machines in Inglewood contains processed, sugar, and chemical-filled products, and zero fresh fruits and or vegetables. Access to healthy food options in Inglewood is problematic, <laughs> and left under address contributes to ob obesity, diabetes, heart disease, and cancer. This challenge creates an opportunity and mandate. One of the vehicles is addressing healthy food options in vending machines. Inglewood is a food desert, and our machine serves as an oasis. Each unit costs us between $1.09 and $1.25. Each unit retails at $2.50. Our gross profit margin is 55%. With two machines, we break even. We need five machines to make a profit. The goal is to purchase 20 machines. We only need a 10% market share to scale volume. Although we have not sold any units, our market has been tested. Currently, we have one machine in production. During a community voting process, our fresh fruit and vegetable vending machine was voted number one. With your $10,000, with your $10,000, <laughs> we will be the first to market healthy vending alternatives in Inglewood. We compete with good relationships, product integrity, high quality service, competitive price points, and product selections in tune with the locals. We are not only selling fresh fruits, we are not only selling fresh fruits and vegetables, we are raising social consciousness at every location we serve, and our goal is to evict other vending machines. Forever <laughs> Fitness Chicago LLC will change the way Inglewood thinks about food forever. Thank you. And the judges are now getting samples of uh, the vending machine products. Do we have any questions or comments for our contestants? Yes. So thank you, excellent job. I, I, I'm curious, uh, how do you plan to um, organize the uh, distribution, uh, number one, your distribution uh, to the vending machine, and how far are you planning your reach on where, you know, the real estate of where you're going to locate these vending machines? Thank you, great question. Inglewood is our target demographic. We work in Inglewood and West Inglewood. We currently purchase our products because they're already prepackaged from Del Monte, which is on 99th in Dorchester, and we bring them here to the community. If we give you money, do we all get a pair of those pants? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Surely the rock goes up. <laughs>
much the vending machine cost? Eleven thousand dollars, and that includes one year's maintenance and the wrapping, the delivery. So do you buy it or lease it? I buy it. So I buy it. You get ten thousand when it costs eleven thousand. How are you going to get that? The same account, out of my own pocket. Oh, you're going to put some in your own money? Absolutely, I put much money into the firm in Chicago. How old is it? How old is the company? Three years. Congratulations. Thank you, sir. Wow. So I'm just going to build on Walter's uh, question because you talked about your profit margin based on revenue. Um, did you factor in the cost of the machines and the cost of the product and how much you your profit margin will be? Absolutely. Okay, that's great. And then my other question is, 250 seems a little high to me, not necessarily for the product, but just for people. It, that it, it's that number where I'm just wondering if people are really going to throw out 250 to get healthy. And, and have you tested the cost, the, the price point of the product? Absolutely. So during the community voting process, our uh, vending machine was voted number one among nine other applicants. And the products that you have in front of you, they sell quickly. Thank you. All righty. Thank you. Andrea Nate Good afternoon. I'm Michelle Flagg, a local real estate attorney and owner of Ready for Solutions Inc. This pro this uh, pitch is uh, geared towards private and public project owners and general contractors looking to do business with them. I'm here to improve the quality of life in Inglewood through job creation, offering and employing training to uh, jobs to the Inglewood residents. Before, uh, the shovel can't hit the dirt until you have the required permits and property rights. Legal research is needed so that you can make sure you have the right, uh, that you know of any restrictions associated with the property way before you can be begin construction. So one of the ways that uh, Ready for Solutions starts that, we help project owners in the following way. First, we provide title research services so that the owner is aware of any restrictions associated with the property. Next, we also handle the permitting process, ranging from environmental uh, occupancy uh, to buildings and occupancy. We handle the process so that construction can move smoothly. You don't want a stop work order that prevents work from continuing on your construction project. Fines associated with the stop work order increase your costs and result in a delay in the project. Those fines associated with the stop work order are not tax deductible. You can't write them off and that's just money lost. Finally, we can also help because we can partner with companies as a minority and women owned business. When bidding on public projects, there's an the alphabet soup of MBE, WBE, DBE. We have all three certifications with the city of Chicago. In addition to some of the uh, 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 public projects requiring an MBE or WB, they also have local resident requirements. We're a local, we're a local company, and we plan to train and develop local residents so that we can respond to those projects. With oh, uh, these, I have an example of some of the projects or some of the positions that uh, would be employed through Red Acre Solutions. And I have the median income along with what the current median income is in Inglewood. Include Red Acre Solutions on your development team. That way you can uh, research property restrictions, get your pa required paperwork in order, and satisfy any DBE goals or MBE goals or WBE goals. Again, my name is Michelle Flagg, Red Acre Solutions. I'm here to improve the quality of life of Inglewood through uh, job creation, helping its growth and development. Thank you. All right, do we have questions from the judges? There you go. Thank you. Michelle, who's your target uh, Customer client is it a developer? Is it a building a property owner looking to have their property developed? Is it, are the construction companies? It was just a little unclear to me who your target cost client is. The the project owner 
who's looking to uh, have construction companies handle the project for them. So it would be the uh, public project owners, uh, such as CHA, City of Chicago, for projects that they're building, as well as private owners, we'll say, for example, uh, how Whole Foods got this project built. So you'd serve as a project manager for the project? Uh, yes, in the pre-construction okay. uh, phase. All right, thank you. Any questions? Yeah. I'm Michelle with Ms. Flagg. Yeah. Um, one of your statements was that you plan to train uh, residents of Inglewood to, um, to uh, later acquire positions within your company. Mm -hmm. What types of positions are you looking to what kind of people are you looking to train and what positions are you hoping to fill with residents from Inglewood? Okay, uh, starting off it would be title examiners and those are the people that can go down to the uh, recorder's office, research the title on the property. Uh, so someone that uh, if, uh, even if they don't have computer skills, they'll be able to physically go to um, the recorder of deeds office and research uh, properties. And then um, also expediters, so people that once we know what a particular code is uh, uh, and which zoning or building permit is needed, they can facilitate that process. Do you have examples as to how you have uh, challenged the city relative to the projects that are going on in the community now? Um, well. One of the things that I do is I try to attend all the pre bid meetings for uh, projects, whether it's CHA, uh, CPS, um, and then I also attend uh, each one of the sister agencies has um, an outreach event. So uh, the main thing is to get to know um, the prime contractors so that you can also be included with their bids as they, um, as, as, as they bid on a uh, project. Nice to see you, Michelle. Thank you. How many, uh, if you think if you were to be the prize winner, how many jobs do you think you could create in the next couple of years here in Inglewood? Um, so within the next couple of years, I would say uh, between five to ten jobs, and uh, a lot of that would depend upon um, the, uh, the range of, of projects that would uh, involve. One of the things that I'd like to do, uh, not immediately, but uh, further on, is to become a general contractor. And so with that, and that would take a little bit more than five years, but, um, but with that, that would greatly increase and involve more uh, construction jobs uh, and uh, more of the trades. Great. Let's give Michelle Flag a round of applause. Bring the jobs to Wellness 360, also known as EW360. EW360 is a fitness, health, wellness, and lifestyle design company. Uh, can I have a quick volunteer really fast? Anybody? Anybody from the audience? That would be oh, me. Come on. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm not doing any splits. No splits. <laughs> okay, inhale, uh, close your eyes for me. Bring okay. your arms up. Exhale, bring them back down. And we're going to send you back to prayer pose, and we're going to send you to the back for a wonderful massage, because part of what we do, go ahead and open your eyes and tell out for me. Danielle, can you please escort us to the back, please? We get a massage. Absolutely. <laughs> part of what we do with wow. EW360, we bring what's called a yogi spa bar and boutique to the community of Inglewood. We believe that by engaging residents of Inglewood and surrounding communities uh, in both fitness and wellness, all at the same time, and transforming underserved and underutilized spaces in the community of Inglewood, we can get more people active and participating in their overall <coughs> health and lifestyle design. We want people to incorporate all fitness and wellness in their everyday functioning, in their everyday lifestyle. While our larger vision is to house a brick and mortar location within the community of Inglewood, we are focusing only right now, today, on funding for the Yoga Spa Barn Boutique because we will utilize that as an independent location. We will utilize that in beauty salons, barber shops, daycares, Wherever you are, we will go. Community gardens, even the park district. 
Right now, we're working with uh, the Chicago Park District at Osmond Park. That is a park that I grew up in, so that is my community give back. And we run the Little Yogis in the Park Community Program, so that we are introducing yoga and wellness to our children of Inglewood. That is our future. We want them also to practice as well as with their families. Um, any questions? What's, what's the business model for the park? Uh, well, the business model, can you run it back for me just a little yeah. bit? Uh, so what we're doing is creating um, a different type of concept with the business model. We're using a little bit of medical fitness as well as behavioral health. My background is as a clinical therapist and also I'm a certified yoga instructor and health and fitness coach. And so I had to figure out a way to put all of that background together. And I reside in Inglewood. I believe in Inglewood as a sustainable and viable community. So that was my way of really coming up with this design. Although we want to have a wellness and teaching training clinic in the brick and mortar as well as a fitness center, we believe that the yoga spa bar and boutique will be the, the way to increase the visibility um, and getting the community actively engaged. But, but I'm sorry, are you charging for classes? Oh, absolutely. So, uh, 25, <laughs> absolutely, yes. uh, $25 um, is the beginning price point, depending on the venue, wherever we go. $25 for? For a family membership, and so they would get... Um, for a, a year, for a month? For, for a, a month. month. For a month. For a month. Okay. Absolutely, for a month. Um, that is the lowest that we can go, and we tried to base that on the income uh, bracket within the Inglewood community. Uh, we're hoping that we can, in some sponsorships or partnerships with other businesses like Allstate, we're at the table talking with them uh, to see if we can get them actively engaged to sponsor some of the families within Inglewood so that we can offer that as a free uh, membership and not so much as a fee for service. Just one more question. How many sure. memberships do you need to sell, sell to make this uh, work? Right now, we're looking at targeting at least 25 families to begin with. That's a small start. Again, we're just trying to promote the visibility for the larger uh, business of EW 360. Um, we believe that we can get more. Uh, we just did a yoga spa bar and boutique. I had about 20 people. People were still canceling, and that was at a $60 price point. Do yes. you employ others? Absolutely, uh, because I cannot do this all. I do Thai body work as well, uh, for those of you that are familiar with that as a form of wellness. Uh, but we also have Danielle, he's the massage therapist. He also resides in Inglewood. And part of what we do with our business design as well, we work with other smaller based businesses within the community of Inglewood so that they can deliver those services as well. So whether it's massage, whether it's yoga, whether it's fitness, whether it's beauty, we employ those individuals as well as independent contractors. So we're looking to employ individuals in Inglewood. And also, if we could, uh, if we had our whole site right now, what we also want to do is train ambassadors to also go out and deliver yoga at other facilities as well. So is the boutique awesome. one location that you're going to lease, or is it a traveling site? You'll go some places and deliver the service. Absolutely. That, uh, traveling is the initial part of the engagement because we have to get it out there. We, I've owned a boutique before, and sitting in the boutique waiting on someone to walk through the doors is not the way to increase the visibility. We have to be out in Inglewood, so it will be an independent uh, location, so to speak, and that's why we want to go into those underutilized and underserved places. That's where people are in Inglewood. There are not a lot of meeting places. We know that there's a barbershop. We know that there are the beauty salons. We know that they're at these other locations, senior homes. We know that they're engaging in other smaller space businesses, 501 c 3 So we want to transform those spaces into the yoga spot bar. And as you can see, this is one of uh, the spaces that we actually transformed into the yoga spot. So we can take whatever we need and take it to that facility, and they get both fitness and wellness all at the same time. And for the $25 a month, what does a family get? The family will get access of uh, one class a week, and that's family involved, or it could be individual. We're not gender specific, uh, we're not age specific. We cater to uh, all age groups, all age brackets, one class a week. Um, and then if they buy the upgrade to the package, then that means that mommy or daddy can also get the yoga spa. Um, and that's why the price point can go up, up to 60 bucks. Thank you. So, it's a, so it sounds like in the interim, before you find a location, you're taking this on the road. What does that cost people? And, and, how, and how much does that cost you to take the show on the road? And what, what do you make on the, your road shows, basically? Absolutely. Uh, because we are independent uh, funded in, in terms of doing this, we save a lot of money on overhead. Um, I have a roster of individuals that work with me so that, um, again, because they're also independent contractors, I can call them and say, hey, we have a date for this day. Are you available? It's no cost to them to come 
actually. And so what we end up doing is the venue actually, in other words, hosts that location. So that's really on them. We promote it. Uh, we take the ticket prices. Again, depending on the venue, it could be $25. Um, it could be $50. It could be $60, just depending on what that venue wants. So if it's a beauty salon, that ticket price point might be a little bit more because we'll be offering beauty services as well. Uh, we have beauty consultants who have their own businesses. So it's no cost to them, but they also get a chance to keep a commission of those sales because we're not charging them anything um, on the front end. We just get a commission off of whatever they make on the back end. So that's another way that we generate revenue. We also sell uh, accessories as well as, uh, you see the t-shirt here, we also sell different t-shirts and accessories. So we also make money that way as well. Do you know your profit margin? Right now, because we are an early revenue generating company and we only done in this venue uh, with the Yoga Spa Boutique, we've done about four. Um, with the ticket price point at 60, we have the opportunity to make just with one with one location, we have the opportunity to make maybe anywhere from a thousand to two thousand. That's just doing one event for that particular day. So if we did that maybe four times a week, the profit margin is definitely there. I know I have another slide up there with the layout on what we could actually get. There we go. Yeah. So our projected tickets are there, but yeah. Um, so we offer different things, yoga spa packages, private fitness packages. Um, we're talking about, and those are just low projected figures. What's the number one reason we should invest in you? Just number one. Um, I believe that, and I believe the community of Inglewood too, knows that it is a sustainable and viable community. We know that obesity, asthma, diabetes, those are chronic killers in our community. And if we don't do something to get a fitness or wellness design program within the community of Inglewood, it doesn't matter what other business is there. I am promoting fitness and health as a lifestyle design for every day. We're talking trauma, we're talking violence, we're talking about all those things, crime, everything located in Inglewood, and I'm talking about using health and wellness as a way to combat that. So I believe that that is why you should invest in it. I'm just looking at those shoes thing there's a WWF, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't want to mess with you. Um, can, you uh, can, you, can you do us a pose? Uh, sure. Uh, let's see. An easy one would probably be what I just had Deborah do, which is mountain pose. You would inhale, close your eyes, and exhale, bring your hands down, prayer pose. And if you're working on your lower back, you go down to four fold, stretch out. And if you want to do something very extra, you can do a downward facing dog pose. Insurance keeps our child keeps us in our homes. Insurance sends our children to college. How about that insurance card in that glove box when we pulled over for a traffic violation? Insurance protects our businesses, and it also provides career opportunities. Inglewood has nearly 80,000 residents, and research shows that nearly half, yes half, have either inadequate coverage or no insurance at all. Now, this really alarms me as a resident of Inglewood. That's 40,000 members of my community. Mm. Now, at New Horizon, we believe the primary reason for this disparity is the lack of knowledge. We all have a part to pay in protecting our community. Mine is insurance, and I take it very seriously. Here at New Horizon, we're developing winners. We're positioning ourselves to partner with city colleges, after school matters, and one summer plus to expose our young adults to professional development, free insurance licensing, and um, customer service. Now, whether we're facilitating information systems, whether we're facilitating information classes at the Inglewood Accelerator, mm -hmm. participating in community-involved events, or out there in the community, out there in the city of Chicago, showing, um, excuse me, promoting product knowledge. New Horizon is there. Now, insurance is not a one size fits all. New Horizon has the tools to protect your business, your family, and your property. In our first year, our solution-based model has shown quarterly profits for New Horizon and our partnering agencies. Our mission is to educate the community on the various types of insurance, how they work, and most importantly, how they can improve the quality of life. But we cannot do it alone. 
That's why I'm here today. New Horizon is petitioning support from Whole Foods, Teamwork Inglewood, and assisting us in bringing quality insurance products and services to the residents of Inglewood. Thank you so very much for your attention. My name is Rhonda Hill Johnson, Director of Strategic Planning for Insurance for New Horizon Insurance. And this is my business partner, Nicole Johnson. She's our project manager. Thank you so much for your attention. Can you bring, give us an example of, of, a, of a specific insurance product that you would bring, that you're bringing to the community, and also then how you would use these funds to create some additional jobs in the community? Absolutely. One of our primary concerns is um, life insurance products. Uh, the majority of our community do not have life insurance products. Inglewood is on a rebirth, and we're excited to be a part of this growth. So, of course, we have uh, products available for our business owners. We have a lot of entrepreneurs coming to the area. We do professional liability. We do commercial products as well. Uh, so those are our two target areas. We want to make sure that our new businesses that are coming into this area, they're gaining momentum. We don't want them to lose it with a loss. So we want to make sure that they have that proper coverage that will cause them to be sustainable and keep their business going. Uh, in regards to the job, so can you repeat that, that portion of the question that you said? Uh, it just if you were to take the money, what um, in terms of creating jobs, create products, you're also creating jobs. Right? Absolutely, absolutely. So uh, our professional development training, we're developing a curriculum to be specific to the, the young people that will have access to through um, different summer programs, uh, like, the, like you said, one summer plus. Um, also with the city colleges, we've been forming relationships, particularly um, uh, we would like to form like a transitional program with Emerson Collective. They're moving to Inglewood, coming from um, Roseland as well. Um, so creating a specific uh, program and curriculum that's geared towards them that will be focusing on the professional development, the careers, uh, the customer service, as well as how to get their insurance license and, and things of that nature. Mm -hmm. Yes. So there are a lot of uh, companies that sell insurance. Um, why, why you? Why, why would uh, someone choose you to, as a source to broke help them find insurance products? Because number one, we do not work for a specific company. We are independent. You are my customers. So like I said, insurance is not a one size fit all. There are many variables that goes into determining what type of insurance product that will be the best fit for that person. We have those options. We're partnering with agencies throughout the city, which has enabled us to have a book of business that will be able to insure just about anyone. Additionally, I think it's important to know our customer because we have such um, significant experience here in the community, being able to provide them with uh, services that are most specific to their need, and also uh, get them to understand the true importance of having that insurance. It's not something that you uh, readily always think about, like, let me get insurance, or it's not a valuable investment um, when you're paying your bills at the beginning. That's why we're so focused on, on sharing in value. Because like I said, I think the, the misunderstanding, a lot of people in our community don't understand how valuable it is and how beneficial it can be our family. So we spend a lot of time doing community outreach, out in the community, in the bank, wherever, trying to make sure that our people have an understanding of how valuable our asset is. Mm. Yes. Any more questions? All right. All right. All right. Inglewood Brews is an authentic and inspired neighborhood microbrewery. We want you to come in with your friends, hang out with your neighbors, and enjoy a sustainably made local product. We want to be a destination, a magnet, and an anchor in this community by bringing manufacturing and jobs back to Inglewood. I'm an architect and urban designer. My passion is community development. We believe that microbreweries are a fast growth <laughs> industry capturing over 6% of all beer sales and growing at 8% annually. Manufacturing, key market sector. We believe that this market sector could have a profound impact on the economy of Inglewood. However, only 3.2% of African Americans are craft beer drinkers and only 1% our um, beer industry employees. We see a real opportunity here to increase the presence and visibility of African Americans in the craft beer industry. 
Our target market of over 50,000 adults on here on the south side of Chicago is socially conscious and have a, has a high level of appreciation for sustainable and locally made products. We want them to choose Inglewood Brews as their beer of choice. So I'm a brewer and my favorite thing about the craft beer industry is it's more than just a commodity product. This is a sustainable product uh, made with local hops and grains by local people uh, and local hands. And there's a beer for every taste in the craft brew world. And craft brew makers, they're the greatest. They love the variety and they always like to seek out the local brew. So as Englewood's Brewer, we're gonna make the beers that reflect the taste and values of our community. People are at the heart of our business. And what that means is we wanna provide an opportunity for Englewood residents, such as veterans and returning citizens, a fun, exciting job in manufacturing. We believe that, um, and also create dozens of jobs in the supply and distribution chain. We look forward to partnering with other local and complementary businesses as well. Englewood Brews has the ability to both transform and revitalize neighborhoods. They can play a part in doing that. Um, breweries are destinations. Over 10 million people in the United States will visit a microbrewery every single year. In Illinois alone, the microbrewery industry represents $2.2 billion worth of economic activity. We'd like to see some of that come back to Englewood. Uh, bringing money into the community and promoting economic growth. Uh, by production year five, we expect that we are going to be on 10% of all taps and shelves throughout our region and in the city, uh, generating about $2 million in uh, sales. Celebrating the positive identity of Englewood is at the core of our business and operation. We're going to create an authentic product with authentic people in an authentic place. We look forward to seeing you in the tap room. I already asked, they did not bring samples. <laughs> oh, oh, because the chief we says don't we don't have a liquor license, okay? <laughs> so they want to be legit. Do we have questions from our, from our panel here? Thank you. So thank you, great presentation. I, you know, alcohol um, has, you know, to some degree, kind of a negative, uh, 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 people view it negatively as a product. Um, especially um, in certain communities where uh, the sale of alcohol is limited um, for important reasons, um, religious in some cases, social others. What kinds of things um, would you do uh, so that uh, your business and your business model generally uh, isn't seen under the same light as you know, traditional um, alcohol, uh, you know, other types of alcohol businesses? Sure, I think we'll, we'll both answer this question, but um, a couple things. Um, the first one is that microbreweries are really manufacturing, and so this is about job creation, about um, bringing money and keeping money in the community. There are also destinations, and so we see this as both a tourist destination, um, having a microbrewery in Inglewood, as well as involving the community, especially you know our target market. Um, the second piece of that really is that um, beer and beer brewing has a history uh, that is about agricultural products and really turning those into something that has, you know, founded civilizations, frankly. And so another part of our business model is partnering with local farmers in Inglewood um, to grow hops for us, which is a burgeoning industry. Um, there's a drought going on on the West Coast where most of the hops come from. It's a key ingredient of brewing beer. And so we see this as um, overall an economic generator um, in, in the community. Right. And the other thing about uh, craft beer is that it's, it's, you know, connected more with um, good eating and <coughs> good food and, you know, is actually competing with wine now uh, as something that you take with a meal. Um, it's not something that people are just going and knocking back 12 of them on the <laughs> college campus or anything. You know, these are, these are beers that are, that are crafted. Um, they have different flavors and there's, there's um, frankly, they, they sensibility than just drinking alcohol is my best answer that way. In, in what ways will you uh, educate the community about your product? Oh, there's several ways that we can do that. Um, the first one is just reaching out to the community and helping them understand what a craft brewery is, what it does. I think the provision of jobs and understanding the supply and distribution chain is another way to get that out. As Steve mentioned, this is a product that is craft 
made. It's made by hand. It's something that is meant to be enjoyed not 12 at a time, but really one at a time. It's meant to have temper. <coughs> so I think that there's you know, a whole way of understanding how to enjoy a craft, how to be, enjoy a craft beer. So we'd like to reach out to the community to help with that understanding and education. Do you have some, uh, some examples of people having 12 at a time? <laughs> <laughs> Never at our microphone. <laughs> so, uh, the, you mentioned this, the craft brewery field is growing and, and the fact that you know, the mar micro breweries are growing at a dramatic pace. Uh, what makes you uh, competitive and gives you a competitive advantage uh, in, that, in that market <coughs> getting tighter all the time? So, the market is getting tighter, yes. But the thing about it is that the craft beer market continues to take more and more away from the major breweries. And lately, um, U.S. Craft, craft beers are now exporting at a very high rate. Uh, so the market continues to grow. The pie continues to grow. But in answer to the question of what differentiates us, it's the fact that we're made here in any way. Um, the beers always reflect uh, where they're made. That's why people like to come to the brewery to get a taste for what people around the brewery like to drink. So um, that's what really differentiates us is that our location. Do you actually have a location for this now already in Inglewood? We are in the process of site analysis and mm -hmm. have some ideas, but it will be in the Inglewood field. And you can actually grow hops in Inglewood? Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, Wisconsin used to be a major hop producing. Um, <coughs> um, back when, you know, the breweries in Wisconsin were giants, so the Midwest is actually very much still had grown hops for 20 years. Seems like not much would grow outside right like today. You know? Today, they don't. <laughs> 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 Party hops. Uh, <laughs> hops will grow um, from from first emergence in the spring to July, mm -hmm. about 20 to 30 feet, and then they'll set flowers and then harvest time. Yeah, comes no, they're pretty. Yeah. How did you two come together as partners? Over beer. Our skill sets are really very complementary, and so it seemed like the right business proposal. Right. Um, what do you think of the startup? When? Uh -huh. um, so, <coughs> what we're doing right now is getting together, you know, the professional um, team that we need, lawyers, uh, brewery consultant, to help navigate the licensure mm -hmm. process, which can be lengthy, but with their help, we hope to be up and running as soon as possible. Um, probably. New Year's? This New Year? <laughs> <laughs> that would be great. Thank you. How are you? Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Sharice Price, owner of Sharice Price Insurance, and I am here seeking $10,000 <coughs> for business expansion. My goal is to hire 16 Inglewood residents, train them to become independent life insurance agents, and cover their licensing expenses. The life insurance industry is a $67 trillion industry, and there is a huge demand for independent insurance brokers. You see, in the 1970s, there were more than 500,000 life insurance agents to serve the population of 204 million people. But with the emergence of the millennial generation, the national population has increased to more than 300 million people. But with retiring other baby boomers, life insurance agents have dropped to 149,000 licensed agents. There is a huge demand for what we do, and with your help, we will be in a position to service the greater Inglewood community. When it comes to life insurance, that's not a topic that many people are comfortable discussing. But we all agree it's a very important topic. So here at, like, at Price Insurance Company, we are looking to hire 16 independent agents over the course of a year. My plan is to hire four independent agents per quarter, train them to become insurance agents over the course of the year of 2017. And again, with your help, we'll be able to do so. We believe that Sharice Price Insurance is the perfect company to bring this to fruition. We believe that because we represent more than 15 of the largest companies in the world. We've all heard of companies like AIG, Mutual of Omaha, Nationwide, you guys, you guys know the jingle? Nationwide is on your side. <laughs> Absolutely, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so as a current Inglewood resident, I've seen so many people not have insurance coverage. 
more than 60% of Inglewood residents either have no, cover, have no insurance coverage or they lack sufficient insurance coverage. Mm -hmm. I've seen many community residents have to do things like start GoFundMe pages to cover fund expenses mm -hmm. of loved ones. We want to show people that they have options. And with your help, Cherise Price Insurance Company will be able to meet that need. There are more than 70,000 Inglewood residents, 21% unemployment rate. That's a very high unemployment rate. But investing $10,000 into my business, we will be able to hire 16 Inglewood residents over the year, over the course of this year, and we will be able to meet all of the financial needs of the Inglewood community. Thank you. That's Therese Price. Questions? Here we go. So if you're with a you're with a potential customer and you're saying talk about life insurance, how do you what is the number one thing you tell them why, why they need to get this? So and what does it cost to do, do something? Okay, so because there are so many different types of life insurance, the cost of a product can absolutely vary. When I sit down with my clients, my job is to first get why they're purchasing their life insurance. Typically, we think life insurance is just to cover funeral expenses, but we are learning and we are teaching people that you can use life insurance for investments, generational wealth, college expenses, retirement planning. So once I sit down with my clients and they explain to me their reasons for buying life insurance, then I'm in a better position to go through what their needs are, and then at that point, we make a recommendation in terms of what they should purchase. Any other questions? So, so you've been working in insurance for three years. Um, in, in your experience, why is it that you think you need 16 more um, agents in the area? So because the population is more than 70,000 and it's continuing to grow, that's not a, 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 a population that I or my three other agents are able to service by ourselves. I believe that there's a huge demand for what it is that we do. And if we have 16 more licensed agents working with us in this community, I think we'll be able to target those masses. That's why I'm looking for 16 insurance agents to work with me over the course of a year. Go ahead. Do, do you know the average income of this, this the, community? The, the, the average income of this community is a little more than $30,000. The average income for life insurance agents are about 43000 46000 depending on what type of insurance they sell. What kind of educational background do you have to have for the job? So what's really unique about the insurance industry is it's fairly easy to get licensed here in the state of Illinois. Everyone obviously has to have a license through the state, and the requirements are they have to go through two 16-hour classes. Once they get the 16 hours, they study for about a week. They go to the state, take the test, pay the licensing fee, and then they get a license. I am requesting that all of the people that I work with have at least a, a high school diploma, and about it. We can train on everything else. Cool. What, are, what are some of your uh, marketing ideas relative to the product? I currently host various monthly workshops here in Inglewood. I get the word out about the difference between different types of insurance. Typically, when we think of insurance, we think of one product. My job is to educate on all of the different types. You can, you can take between a temporary life insurance product, which is a term product, or something more permanent, which is a whole life, index universal life, universal life, things like that. So I sit down again with any of my potential clients. I do educating first, first and <coughs> foremost, because I want them to know that they have options. And so once I educate them on all of the different types of products, then we're in a position to move forward with bringing them on as a client. What is your current uh, book of business looking like? And so my current book of business is about 87% life insurance, and then I also have annuity products and investment products. So 85% life insurance products. I currently have, my biggest market is in, is in Inglewood. My biggest market is in Inglewood. I live in Inglewood, I grew up in Inglewood, I market to Inglewood, I have tons of clients in this room actually. So many of my clients are in the Inglewood community. So I, so I, market, I market to the, to the community of which I serve in the community most of your business stay on your books once it's written? How, how are you maintaining it? Most of my businesses does stay on my books because when I sit down with my clients, and because I'm a broker, I'm actually absolutely able to get them the best product for their budget. I'm not going to sit down with someone and say, let's start a plan where you're saving $200 a month where their budget is only $30 per month. And so because I'm a broker, I am able to help anyone with a budget of $25 per month on up to, say, $500 per month. You know, just whatever it is they're looking for.
Yeah. And John, do you think about creating like these, these would be residents of Englewood, they'd be hired? These would be residents of Englewood. They will have a license with the state of Illinois. They will have two licenses, actually. They will have a license to sell life insurance and uh, annuity products, and they will also have a health insurance license that would allow them to enroll people for Medicare, Medicaid, and things like that. So these are vital jobs that, unfortunately, we don't typically think of, but the insurance industry is a $67 trillion industry, and I believe that if we get the right agents working with us, we can absolutely take over Inglewood in, in terms <laughs> of life insurance. So if you get these funds, 100% of these funds are going to hire people? Or? 100%, $9,600 mm -hmm. is going to be the cost to employ, train, pay for the licensing costs of 16 Inglewood residents. Everything is going towards the hiring and training and preparing for them to get licensed in the state of Illinois. Mm -hmm. And where is your business house today? So currently I am at 95th Street in Western and I do, what's really unique about my, my business is I sit in, I go into people's homes. So even though I don't have a physical location just yet in Inglewood, I'm actually in the process of doing that now, but I do have an office on 95th Street in Western and I host tons of workshops here in, in the community and I also go into homes to sit down with clients and potential clients to go through what their uh, life insurance needs are. So that's Let Us Serve You. And with the $10,000, 
for Let Us Serve You. We'll be able to serve each family and the Inglewood community, not just tasty foods, but healthier foods to help you live a longer and healthier life. you created actually a, a label for Let Us Serve You? Do you actually have a retail label? I do not have a retail label. So that's part of what you do is create the label here, the package and all that? Yes. The scan and the barcode and all that sort of thing? Yes. That's what you want to do? Mm -hmm. And how many products would you start out with initially at Whole Foods? Initially two products. The muffins and a sugar-free mango tea that's made with uh, black pico tea and pure uh, mango juice. So I would start out with those two products and slowly work my way up to more. Where are those muffins, by the way? They're pretty good. Yeah. 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 Trey went by <laughs> uh, That uh, what's in that apple? What are, what are the ingredients in the apple sauce muffin? Now, if I tell you that, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but so there's, it, it's what really simple, and I'm okay to share. Um, so it's whole wheat. It's yeah. it's coconut oil. It's almond milk. Okay. Um, 
It is raw oats and applesauce. And applesauce and the, the, the cranberries. Oh, it's good. So it's I can rich. switch it up. I'm glad you like it. So and you, you can eat, it's flavorful, right? And you don't feel guilty afterwards. And that one muffin is less than 30 calories. Wow. Oh, 